Hey developers, today we're gonna to talk about if everyone should learn to code or not. Should we be learning code in high school? Should it be a required class? Today we're gonna to talk about that and a lot more, so stay tuned all the way to the end. Hey, and if you're new to this channel, my name is Eric Hanchett. I have over 10 years of development experience, and in this channel I talk to you a lot about different topics on programming, on computer science, web development, Vue.js, and a lot more, so stay tuned. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my response to Poly Matters, not everyone should code video. So in this video, he goes over a bunch of different points of why he doesn't think everyone should code and that it shouldn't be required class. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this video and give you my opinions. All right, so let me talk about this video. So uh, the link's below in the description if you guys are interested. So the first point he makes is that coding is a valuable skill Absolutely is in the way of reading and writing. No, and I think that obviously is true. You know coding has its skills But is it at the level of reading and writing? You know, I don't think it's at that point yet So I definitely agree with this part of the video as he starts out and then his first big point is coding is the new literacy and he goes on to say that people are comparing learning to program with being a doctor being a lawyer and his idea is that that it's a really good job, but it's not a universal skill that everybody uh, should learn. And this is one point that I kind of little bit disagree on. And the reason is that computers are amazing and they have a lot of advantages in the world we live in now. I think at the minimum amount that we should have some kind of computer literacy in high school, maybe even in middle school, just so people understand how to work with computers. So now this is a broad topic. You can say, well, this isn't computer science, but there's actually a lot of fundamental things in computer science than just programming. So you could say that problem solving, creative thinking is a part of computer science. If you were in a basic digital literacy class to learn, you know, such things as uh, like how to, you know, what encryption is, you know, what are cookies on your computer? Obviously, we've had typing classes forever. Uh, how to be safe on the internet, um, how to deal with social media correctly. I think those would be really good skills that we could teach in our computer digital literacy classes. And then beyond that, I think you could go and take one step further and actually learn more about like computational theory. I don't think uh, having every single student learn a programming language is going to be the best bet because programming languages change all the time. But it might be a good idea to actually have students learn some of these theory, these algorithms, these type of problem solving things that would be really important. So I do think it's a good job, um, not a basic universal skill. Uh, I, I still think it can be a skill that can be taught in high schools. I think it would be uh, well worth it. So his next point is that everyone uh, should code. Now in that point, he was saying that we're kind of teaching everyone to code in the simplest terms. And he kind of makes a, a, a comparison that people are just tap, tap, tapping, and then that's programming, and that's not programming. I think this is more of a straw man argument because I don't think anybody says that just by tapping a few things on the computer that you're programming. Now there is, like if you teach kids programming, there are very simple ways you can teach basic loops conditionals using basic programming type languages. I would say that is programming and it is a very basic way of doing it, but kind of this way of saying just tap, tap, tap your programming is not the same. And it kind of ties into his next point, which is that there's these coding boot camps out there that teach you how to programming in 14 weeks. And they, they can teach you how to learn quick and you can memorize some things, but it's not the same as a computer science degree. And once again, I, I think this is, once again, a little bit more of a straw man argument. I don't think anyone's saying that when you come out of these boot camps that you are equivalent to a computer science degree. I mean, he says, uh, coding boot camps teach programming in 14 weeks. They claim the benefits of computer science, solving efficient, creative mathematical problems, and that's what companies are paying six figures for. So he's equating that companies are really looking for people who have mathematical problem solving skills. And that's not the same thing that coding boot camps are delivering in 14 weeks. Now, I, I think there's a, there's a few things going on there. Of course, computer science is a broad term. Um, it's a field of study that includes a lot of mathematics, physics, and a lot of other things. And it doesn't necessarily 
relate to just programming in general, and I would agree with that. Uh, however, saying that companies are looking for people that have these mathematical problem-solving skills is not quite true. Obviously, it's not true at all. There's a lot of companies out there that are looking for people with good problem-solving skills. I would agree with that part, but they're also looking for people that can get stuff done. I'd always think back when people talk about what companies are looking for to Joel Spolsky's article, The Gorilla Guide to Interviewing, where he actually simplifies the hiring process to two parts. Uh, he's looking for people who are smart and getting things done. Because obviously if you have someone that's really smart but they can't get things done, that's more like, you know, they would be a good researcher. Uh, but if they can get things done but they're not smart, they're probably not doing it correctly. So I think companies are more looking for that and not necessarily looking for these type of computer science like people. Now, I'm not I'm not going to be the first person to say that getting a uh, learning to program in 3 months like Chris Sean, he has a channel where he talks about that or learning to program in 2 months like Dreaded Dev or going to a coding bootcamp it does not make you a developer programmer. It'll make you uh, learn the basics of what you should know. It'll teach you some skills that you should know to get past the interviews, but it really becomes uh, the responsibility of the person once they get that job to actually start learning and learning on the job probably. I don't think this is a, a really good way to describe people be between programming and computer science. I think it's a, a lot more nuanced and complicated than that. And you could argue that someone that could go, go through a 14-week boot camp has learned some problem-solving skills because that's what you're going to be doing through the 14 weeks. You're going to be constantly given different problems. You're going to have to solve them. Um, you're not going to become an expert at it. And obviously, when you get in the real world, you're going to have to be at a, sitting at a desk and trying to solve problems all the time, eight hours a day. But I think coding boot camps definitely gives you the basis to start off with. I definitely think that. So his next point is that uh, he thinks a lot of people are going into the computer science field and, and to programming in general, really, and that the supply is going up and eventually salaries are going down. And I've... I definitely said this before in the past. I agree with this. I think the, the market is getting flooded in the high end. We're getting a lot of uh, people with visas coming over from India, China that already have master's degrees in computer science that we have to compete with. In the low end, every other um, these coding boot camps are flooding the market with good programmers that know their stuff. I mean, they don't really know everything. They're good junior programmers or probably can get jobs. So it's becoming really um, the demand is there for people with experience, but it's still, it's, it's, the supply is going up. So, you know, in everything, what he said in that part, I agree with. So he kind of goes over the last point is the benefits of coding. And what he says in there is that, uh, the benefits of coding is problem solving, uh, creative thinking, but there's a better way of teaching these skills, according to him. Uh, is like maybe taking personal finance classes. He said one of his best classes he was at was the speech and debate class. And that he really thinks that these computer type science classes should be more of a, um, not a requirement, but more optional. And I think that goes back to the beginning, what I said with, and I also, I kind of looked up this Forbes article. I kind of got similar, some information on that where people are, are definitely, and I'll include the links below, uh, definitely, uh, we need to kind of think of how we're going to teach our computer science to kids in the future. And like I said, I think digital literacy is extremely important. I think you can kind of lump that into basic computer science in general. Uh, there's also a good point that uh, to make this a requirement for many schools, especially in K-12, is they don't even have the teachers that know this stuff well enough to teach it. So like it's impossible if tomorrow the president said or in the United States or in many other countries said that this has to be a requirement there's not the skills there the teachers there to actually teach it so this is kind of an argument that's that I don't think is is uh is I don't think this argument is something you can make right now because they're just not the skills in schools right now to make this argument but assuming that maybe one day we had every school at least in the United States that had computer science teachers that could teach these topics then I would say that you know, it would be a good idea maybe to have a type of class that was required beyond maybe a digital industry and maybe some computational theory that explained a little bit more. Maybe we're talking about, maybe we can talk about uh, algorithms and use that type of 
problem solving approach, but not necessarily tie it to a programming language. And if we have to, maybe we just go with the latest, maybe we just go with JavaScript. But I think this would be extremely helpful for people. And, and I'm not saying taking a personal finance class or uh, speech and debate aren't important or you can't learn the same skills in each, but I think that you can easily learn these same skills in this type of uh, algorithm class in a high school setting or a middle school setting and you can learn it just as well as if you took a speech and debate or finance class. So I hope you guys like this video. I just kind of went over a few of uh, thoughts I had. Um, you know, definitely check out Polymatters video to see what you guys think. Now let me know in the comments below, do you think computer science type courses should be mandatory for computer uh, from high school students or middle school students? Um, or should it be an optional class? Have you taken computer classes like this in high school? How were they? Um, let me know. I know a lot of high schools offer computer classes right now, and I don't know if any of them are mandatory. So that I'd be interested to see if you guys have heard that. So let me know below. Um, and if you guys like this type of content, uh, please click that subscribe button. That really helps me. And then click that little thumbs up button and then click the bell button so you can get notified next time I do a video. Thanks.